Welcome to the Rustic Garden. Today is July 10th. It's late in the evening. Got a lot done in the garden and I'm going to give you a full tour. This is up on my container deck. It's going to be a little bit candid. I didn't go through and necessarily clean up everything. I've been doing a lot of work today. But I have sweet potatoes growing in buckets right down there. That's a determinate tomato. And I've talked about them before, how they all set fruit um, over a period of time and then they all start to ripen. So that plant's going to pretty soon have a whole uh, lot of ripe tomatoes on there and then that plant will die out. I got basil in containers up there, some determinate tomatoes, some in, indeterminate tomatoes. That's a yellow cayenne pepper back there and you might notice a lot of white spray on the leaves of my plants. I've been keeping up with spraying perfectly this year. It's probably the first year that I've done that and I don't have any diseases showing on my tomato plants at all. There's an eggplant in there. That's a Rutgers tomato doing really well. You can see some large tomatoes starting to form on there. Another indeterminate tomato, I'm sorry, another determinate tomato. That is my glacier and that's starting to set fruit and turn color. Oregano, my self-watering container. It's a project that I have going on for the end of July. It's doing really, really well. A lot of my flower boxes are dying out. Dwarf tomatoes, that's lettuce that I'm actually letting turn to seed so I can collect the seeds. Over on the other side of the deck I have perennials that I use to attract insects and, you know, good for pollinators. Coming down my deck, we go right into the herb garden that I cleaned out last week. That's doing well. Far in the back there by those daisies is a kale plant and some more kohlrabi. That is an heirloom celery plant. Some overseeded, some single plants. I'm just getting that um, not just getting it, it's been growing, but this is the first year that I put that into the ground and it's doing pretty well. More tomatoes back in there. These are my cherry tomatoes. More cherry tomatoes coming around this way. I just put in another squash plant. One thing to do is I put in a lot of zooks, zucchini and squash, you know, weeks ago and they've been producing, but go ahead and drop in another plant now. I just seed start them in those little containers right there or in a styrofoam cup. Keep them by my door and in about seven to ten days you have a transplant that you can go ahead and put out into the garden. And that's just a great way to sort of back up your plants in case you end up with diseased plants or bugs coming in. Just rip out the plant, put in the new transplant and you'll have zucchini and squash a couple weeks from now. Another part of my tomato garden. This is actually endive in there and I let it flower. It, you can't see them now but they only flower in the morning and it's these beautiful purple blue flowers that form on there. Grapevine, asparagus, a raised bed in there. I've got beets, good sized beets in there too actually. Those are ready to come out. There's another one right in there. The beets will be in a video this week. Those are my bucket container grapes and that is a goji berry. Coming through here was a video I was doing on these blue potatoes and those two containers were actually um, an experiment. One was half filled planted potatoes and then I back filled the other one but the video didn't really turn out how I liked it so I just kind of scrapped it so I'll be cleaning that up. Coming over on this side we have My squash, cucumbers, zucchini that I'm growing up these trellises. It makes it real easy to get under there and spray. I've sprayed my neem oil today on the undersides of the leaves. I put my antifungal down. I'm using Serenade. Everything is doing really, really well. Over on this side are my kales. They had some white fly issues last week. I took care of that. Gave them another dose of neem oil. These are my indeterminate tomatoes and they're doing well. They're Aussie heirloom. Those are just starting to form. Then I have the Sioux right back in there. You can see all the tomatoes forming on there. That's a Rutgers back there. That's a semi-determinate. Boxcar Virginia Sweets doesn't have any tomatoes on it yet, but it will. Here's another ribbed tomato. And that's a Cotolito. I always worry about how to pronounce it. But it's a really cool ribbed tomato and it was actually grown in Thomas Jefferson's garden. Here's a Paul Roberson. Nice tomatoes forming and no disease 
showing it all, knock on wood. Pink ox heart, they're looking great. Dark green zucchini down in there, doing really, really well. Coming around this side, we have a round zucchini plant. I just harvested that. So I took all the harvest sort of out of my garden today. Cucumber, squash, zucchini, anything that was really ready before I sprayed. More tomatoes in here. Two new varieties, that's a coyote. And the one back here is a copia. And that's gonna be orange and red striped. Mint julep. And then I think the last one is the Kentucky orange. No tomatoes on there yet, but it's flowering and that will be, you know, having tomatoes soon. Now in the next three weeks or so, all these tomatoes are going to be ripening. You know, they're my indeterminate tomatoes really. Asparagus coming straight down into here. My American leeks that I planted. A couple more determinate variety tomatoes. The backsides of bush pickle uh, cucumbers. My onions, got a couple forming in there nicely. Let's see if I can squeeze through here. Coming into my hot pepper garden. And there's four or five different varieties of hot peppers in there. Again, everything's been sprayed. These are Italian red onions, Luongo I think they are, or Luanga. Straight eight cucumber back there. Doing very, very well. These are some determinate variety tomatoes that are going to be ripening soon. Things are looking pretty good. More determinate varieties that are starting to die out. Brussels sprouts, minor white flies, but I sprayed them again today. More kale. If you're growing kale, it's a good idea to space it out throughout your garden. This way, if you get any kind of insect problems, sometimes the different plantings don't get what one on the other side of your garden may have. Cherokee purples, looking really good. German Johnson, Brandywine yellows, yard long beans right there. This is my first year of growing okra. It's doing really, really well. Coming across to the other side, this is a Bradley semi-determinate tomato. These are ground cherries right there, and that is a purple tomatillo, courtesy of Coley, who's doing that Grow It, Cook It, Eat It series with me. That's chervil in the back, or is it, no wait. No, it's lovage. It's a perennial herb that comes back. It tastes a little bit like celery, comes back year after year. Another grapevine back there. More cucumbers doing really, really well, trellised in different ways. Here's my Todd County Amish, Brandywine Yellow back there. Now all of my indeterminates I've pruned to initially a single stem, then I let a double stem go, then a triple stem, and I kind of do that just to create space so air flows through. And you can see on the bottom of my tomatoes, I remove a good foot of leaves over time so that the air can circulate through there. But tons and tons of tomatoes. That's an indigo apple, and I like those because you can see the purple top starting already. They get a nice dark indigo purple color. More asparagus right back there. Another perennial bed in the middle of my garden to bring in those pollinators. That's doing really, really well. And actually, let me bring you all the way across if I'm given a full tour. These are my overrun perennial beds that have to be cut back and weeded down. That's an apple tree with not a single apple on it. I have squirrels nesting in these different trees around me and they've come and taken every single apple off of there. And then finally we come into the sweet pepper garden. All kinds of green peppers, red peppers, yellow peppers, right back in there, banana peppers. We just picked all of those off of there. Sweet peppers, a couple dill plants that reseeded themselves. And this mess in here is gonna get cleaned out. But this is my kiwi plant, male and female. Still hasn't flowered, overrun by Japanese beetles, but that got sprayed with neem oil. And then we come back around, and that's the garden from this side. That's just about my entire garden. Hope you enjoyed the video. Some of you wanted to see a full tour. This is what's going on as of July 10th. 
And the biggest thing to really take away from this is I finally listened to my advice and I've been spraying every 10 to 14 days, once a week when needed, but I've been staying up on all the different sprays, antifungals, um, neem oil, um, stuff for insects, even been putting yasprin on the tomato plants. Things are looking really good and I hope come August I can say the same thing. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please check out my blog at www.thrusticgarden.blogspot.com and also check out my YouTube videos. Thanks.